Hello, uh, my name is Carolina and I am here at the beautiful Purple Valley Yoga Center uh, together with David Fredrickson. So David has been here now for the past five years. So it's quite many years now. Yeah. And finally, we have managed to meet in front of the camera and we are going to go through one of the gatekeepers in primary series. So perhaps not gatekeepers, but one of the dream um, movements of many Ashtangis when they start to practice. Um, jump throughs and jump backs. Or yes. lifts, jump backs and jump throughs. So I have been practicing for the past 13 years. And as for today, I have still not managed with this movement. And I hope that David will be able to give me some more insight when it comes to that. So let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to go through a few drills uh, today. But also, one thing that I think is very important is that students learn how to alternate legs. Okay. Because um, this was one of the things that happened to me uh, was that I was working up an imbalance. Nobody told me to switch my legs when I was lifting up to jump back. And same thing, jumping through. So I was always crossing with the right over left. So after a while, I got a big imbalance. I could really feel it in my stomach. And now, since the last couple of years, I'm really working on it myself to cross with left over right. So would that be to create equal strength on both left and right side, you mean? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think it's okay in the beginning to maybe work one leg, but once you kind of started to lift up and jump back and jump through and you start clearing from the mat in both instances, I think it's super important that you start changing it up. Because I was doing it year after year after year, only right side over left. And of course you got good at it, but then when you try to do it the other way around, not so easy. So. And are you going to do, use any props, like blocks or something for this? Never used it. No? Okay. And I don't think it's helpful at all. Okay. I think it's helpful to do um, these exercises that I'm doing. And we have good success rates with that with our students back in Stockholm. And what about uh, body proportions, like, you know, long legs or, mm. you know, wide hips, short arms? There are many different things that I can think of that would be a hindrance to basically lift up and jump back. Do you think that everyone can do it? I think there's a possibility for everyone to do it. Okay. But I really love when people come at me and uh, say, oh, I have short arms, therefore I cannot. I have short arms. Yeah. So if you have short arms, chances are you have shorter legs. So your legs might not be so heavy. <laughs> they might not be giraffe legs, right? So you have less stuff to tuck in in order to jump back. So, I mean, it's like everything. If you're going to do Kapotasana and you have long legs, long arms proportion wise of course you're not gonna have to go in as deep as somebody with shorter legs and shorter arms or if you look at a pose as Eka Parashirshasana same thing longer leg is gonna be beneficial but to say that it's beneficial to have long legs and lifting up and jump back I don't know I think that's gonna be the opposite so there's always within this practice there's gonna be a benefit to maybe have shorter arms shorter legs Sometimes it's going to be a benefit from having long legs, long arms, but everyone can work the process. So I think in this day and age also, it's really good to have something to work towards and maybe not master right away because it gives us patience. We are on our phones. We're doing a lot of things where we want, want it fast, right? Instant gratification. Working the process is super important, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to work the process and see if we can master it. And maybe in, in a year you will do it. Well, or 13 more years. Or <laughs> 13 exactly. more years. But yeah. you, have, you have something. I know you are a str very strong practitioner. You have a really strong, beautiful practice. But I think it's also beneficial to everyone that's going to watch this, that they know that, okay, Carolina can do this, but this is something that she still has to work with. 
I tell you, 13 years. So patience for sure. Yeah. Patience for sure. Yeah. So shall we start? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So, so it's a little bit hot today. <laughs> <laughs> we might be sweating just yeah. a little bit. But uh, I think one of the things that is important is when people are starting working, that they really start working the core by crossing. Yes, you can tuck in the arms like so, but crossing like that, and then trying to keep the knees glued to the shoulders and into the stomach as they lift up and come down. So should uh, I do this on your mat? Right? Yes. Okay. So you mean that I should be crossing my legs? Yes. Do you want my knees to be close together or? No, not necessarily. No. I, I, the pulling in with the only the stomach, okay, not with the already. arms. <laughs> yeah, that and then try to lift up like an utlutihi and keep the legs in there, yes, and come down. This is a simple exercise that, I mean, if you do it each leg 10 times, you're gonna feel it, right? Yeah, so you mean that I should be shifting my legs like this? So Absolutely. I can already here feel that when I'm crossing with my left leg on top of the right one, there's a completely different strength, much yes. less strength. Yes, and that's what I was talking about, that imbalance. And most of us have that imbalance. Yeah. So, I mean, you can, you can work left over right. Come down, stretch the legs out maybe. Okay. Lift up, come down, stretch the legs out. Maybe do that five, eight, 10, 12 times, right? So this is great for like Navasana, right? I had a light breakfast <laughs> and no lunch. Yeah. And once you've done that, depending on, you know, you can either work one leg at a time. So maybe you try right over left, lifting up. So to have, a, so I'm supposed to have my knees as close as possible to the chest. Absolutely. and without helping with your arms or anything. For some people in the beginning, they might have to cross, do that, and then... Put the toes down. Put the toes down. Okay. But this is, even for me who can do this, it's core workout. Mm -hmm. Serious. And then you're also working with your bandhas. So basically when you're coming Absolutely. up, and you are this taking the spool, engaging your lower belly. Mula Bandha, Uddiyana Bandha. Full, um, full Uddiyana Bandha, Mula Bandha, because okay. otherwise this is yeah. impossible, I would say. Okay. <laughs> so here people can be creative. Maybe left or right first, and then right over left. Yeah. You can alternate. You can do it a few times, right? Mm. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> So the order, I think, is also very important in how you do it. Okay. Meaning, we know that, for instance, when we do uh, Bhujha Pindasana after Navasana, it's always going to be a right over left, right? So when we come to Navasana, I suggest crossing left over right, right over left, left over right, right over left, left over right. But you would not cross your legs in Bhujha Pindasana? No. Or that, change that, the... Yeah, yeah. That one is kind of set for us in, okay. in, in primary series. So, um, the way I start it then, if I come from Pashimottanasana, so I've done standing and we done the first Dandasana, we catched our toes and we fold here. I'm going to inhale, come up. And then I'm going to cross right, left over right first, lift up, and then tap my toes down and step or hop, jump back here. Okay. So, when I move forward, I'm going to step the left foot to my right hand. Okay. And I'm going to be, everything here is pushing away from the floor. And here also I can start dragging my toes through. Hmm. That gives also that core strength that we're talking about. 
Mula Banda, Oriana Banda is super engaged. Okay. So after I've done the left over the right, we go into Purvatanasana, mm -hmm. right? So I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna come down. But this time I'm gonna do right over left. Okay. So I'm gonna cross right over left. I'm gonna lift up. I'm gonna step back. Mm -hmm. Reason for this is when we start alternating legs, it's really nice because we start working the right hip first in Ardha Bada Padma Paschimottanasana, right? Okay. But the left leg is extended, so that's why I always cross with the left okay. first if, when I go into that pose. So once I come up, I'm going to cross with left. When I do the other side, since the right leg is extended, I'm going to do right over left. So that way it sets you up, up all the way to Navasana and Bhujha Pindasana. If you start working with the extended leg. So whichever is the extended leg from your downward dog, you're going to jump across with the left. Mm -hmm. Lift up, jump back. If the right is forward, you jump through with the right crossed, and then the other one. Okay. okay. Let me try. Yes. Let's see how far I come. So, so we start with Pachimottasana. Yes. <clears throat> so now we start with right. left over right. Lift up. Yeah. Step back, lower down. And now since we're going in to Purvatanasana, we're gonna start with the right foot to the left hand. And then I'm stepping, I'm stepping forward? Yeah, right over left, and then start dragging the feet through. Drag the feet through, yes. Okay. And then lift up for Purvatanasana, Ashta inhale. And now I exhale from that. And then do right over left. Yes. And lower down. And then Ardha Bada Padma Paschimottanasana, left over right. So I have to start with this then? Yes. And drag through. It's warm and nice, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's hard work. Yes. And then go into the pose. Come fast today. One, two, three, four, five. Now I inhale, head up. Exhale. Desha, left over right. Ekadesha Satwari, jump back. Dwadesha, inhale. Trayodesha, exhale. Shatodesha, right over left. Yes. Mm -hmm. Makes sense now. Makes sense yeah. now. You understand? Yeah. yeah. Pancha desha, exhale. Especially when you build up a flow, it yeah. starts making sense. Two, three, four, five, inhale it up. And sapta desha, lift up, right over left. Ah, <laughs> right over left. Ashta desha, shatvari, jump back. Ikona vimshati, inhale. Vimshati, exhale. All right, I'm gonna let you rest a little bit, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you see, once you start building up the flow, it becomes this alternation of which leg is extended may start making a lot of sounds, mm -hmm. right? At least for me, that's also how I was able to start feeling way more balanced and way more centered. Okay. Because 
it was really getting to be weird for me physically in, in the body because I had just doing right over left, right over left and could not even lift up. I mean, just trying to lift up like this was so hard. And like you said, already for you, you could feel a difference between the mm -hmm. sides, right? So I think if people start working it that way, then it's, it's just going to be mm -hmm. much more healthy for them in the long run. Okay. Yeah. Um, so once you kind of um, started to do that part, then you, of course, the leaning forward for, for jumping back is going to be key. So once you start feeling that I can lift up, I'm going to clear. Mm. The leaning forward part is always the tricky part. So that would be require, requiring quite a lot of strength in your shoulders. <sighs> arms and strong bandhas. I would say strong bandhas, but yeah. also you need to have gained some the kind of flexors. openness in the hip flexors. Yeah. So you see these strong guys, you can't, yeah, you look at them, right? They definitely have the strength mm. to do that, but they can't clear because they're not open enough in the hip flexors. Okay. But this is also why we do this exercise, right? We try to alternate. We, that's why people need to be tight. So for me, honestly, I don't think it has to do so much with strength. I think everybody that can do a decent chaturanga, hold a plank position, do decent chaturanga, actually can, can lift up and jump back. Okay. I'm, I'm going to be very honest about that. Sorry, guys. But <laughs> I think that's the truth. So it's more about the core and the bandhas and the technique and having the guts of leaning forward. If you can keep the thighs... The knees, thinking the knees to the shoulders, you will clear, right? Can you do again? Sure. So if I do the other leg, the right, mm -hmm. I go tight. So knees to your chest? Yes, and try to... Think the knees to the shoulders. And strong uh, knees, to, yeah. knees to the shoulders. So I think strong the, bandas. Yeah, I do two things. I try to get the thighs to my stomach and I try to think knees to, to the shoulders. Come up. I have to lean. And I see a lot of people that they, they're afraid of leaning forward. But it's not a biggie if you do that. It's not a very big fall. No, so I had a teacher that uh, told me once not to be afraid of sacrificing my face. My oh, <laughs> I honestly don't think you will sacrifice <laughs> your face, but yes. So that's, that's kind of the big thing. But really, you know, after your practice is done, just doing these exercises can be helpful, but mainly do them in the practice. Take your time. Because there's a lot of people that are like, you know, and then they're very sloppy. And they don't think that, oh, what they're doing is important. But I think every time you have the chance to do a proper lift up, tucking the legs into the chest, the knees towards the shoulders, leaning forward, stepping or jumping back, doing proper upward dog, Stepping forward, once you've learned how to step forward, right over left or left over right, you start jumping. And mm. this is so much core. But I, I don't put the balls on my feet down. I land on, the, on my on pointed feet. But everything is sucking in here. And I can continue pulling. The pulling, knees to pulling. chest. Yes, mm. and knees to chest. And that gives a lot of core work. You don't have to do a ton of crunches. You actually can work within the primary series. So when you are practicing this uh, movement of taking the chest forward when you are jumping back, you have your uh, knees towards your chest uh -huh. really tight. Then you are lifting and then you are leaning forward. So when I'm taking my feet back, you feel it's okay in case I put down my toe? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. In the Putting down the toes, I think, is okay. Don't put down the, like the ball of the foot. Okay. But also, 
people need to remember you got to lift the chest and the head and look forward because a lot of times people are doing everything great then they drop the head and then they collapse okay. so it's it's but it's not an effort all in in that sense that it's straining because that's another thing that i see people are not quick enough in this movement they do it too slow so you mean that there is a sense of a momentum there's a momentum so once i've come up here you gotta you gotta do a little bit of a momentum forward right if you don't do that it's going to be very heavy i think but then you got to be able to suck everything into the body mm. so there's a little bit of sh that's happening mm -hmm. want to give it a go okay let's see how this goes it's that momentum i think it's the momentum that is missing <laughs> no but i i think for a lot of people it is actually yeah okay so i'm starting with my right on top of the left because yeah, that's, that's the okay. easier side do whichever one you like and Tuck it in, and yeah, mm. not bad. I, I, I will buy that. It, I think if you work every jump back and jump through like that, it's gonna be absolutely cool. But see, you're you're strong enough to clear when you jump. Yes. So that's why I think for you it's gonna be a, okay. maybe more of the momentum. But it's that, I think it's that lift yeah. that is missing. Let me try again. Now I'm doing the left over. Yeah. Yeah. And kick back. <coughs> All right. So that's another thing. A little bit more of momentum leaning forward and then kicking the okay. legs back. So I'll try the right one again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kick back. <laughs> <laughs> I think it requires a little bit, bit of practice. It does. But the thing is, you know, like I said, I it, it was impossible for me to lift up with left yeah. over right. It just, it was not happening because uh, years of practicing. Right. Yeah. And then also another mistake when it comes to jumping through that people do is that they think they got to jump past the hands right like how do you mean when they come here a lot of people they try to think that they need to jump the body past the hands but if you look at what i'm doing i'm actually putting the brakes on so look at my left foot if i'm pressing left over right here i'm gonna hook see mm -hmm. so i only have to jump to my hands but a lot of people they're just winding up and mm. try to shoot the legs through right so okay. if I do it with the crossing with right, I'm putting on the brakes and then clear it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's a sh that's why jumping forward, jumping through is, is easier, right? It's a shorter distance for you to travel hmm. also. But I think it's very beneficial because you need a little bit of that explosiveness so once you are able to stop you start jumping and jumping right because it gives you a little bit of that momentum that we're talking about and that's i think will also help you when you do the lift up and jump back right so i think people need maybe to speed up a few of these steps so once the knees are here Gonna move a little bit faster here and then kick out the leg. Okay, so I guess that uh, as you said in the beginning, it's patience and practice. It is patience and practice and nothing else. And I think I'm gonna repeat myself. I think it's good that we have things since everything is, and especially for a person like me who's always gone on instant gratification and things going fast, it's really good that I have something in this practice that I need to work on really really need to work on that it's not the quick thing it doesn't go easy I, I have to work with good technique I have to work with the breath I have to stay in the process 
if I am able to finish the pose or not, maybe is not the most important thing. The important thing is that I keep practicing. Sometimes you're gonna need to experiment on your hand placement, depending on body type, how you're feeling that day, if you gained weight, lost weight, slept a little, you might have to just move your hands back and forth because that can actually change. Maybe from spring to winter, you might have to just see, oh, I could have my hands here, but now I have to move them back a little bit. So what is actually the position of the hands? I, did not think I think that, that yeah. is very individual. Okay. That's why I'm bringing this up. So for me, I'm a little bit back here. For I've seen some people, they're a little bit more front. But for me, I'm a little bit right where my hip bones are. That's where I need to go. But I think this has to do with proportions for people, right? So it's different for different body types. That's why I... Because I've had to move my hands forward a little bit, move them back a little bit in order to get this, especially when I was working with getting the left crossing because it wasn't natural. So I needed to kind of, uh, 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 before I got it, yeah? So I'm going to make one last try. Sure. Now. See if I can make it more smooth and graceful. <clears throat> I think it's good for everyone to see that not everything is always very graceful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And kick back. Oh, my nose. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, you know, at least you need yeah. to sacrifice your chin a little bit. Then. <laughs> but I think that's okay, though, that, you know, that you come down. Because now you're, you're, you're going for it and you're coming down. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> we will call this video progressions yes. towards <laughs> jump throughs and jump backs. Yeah. yeah. So... A few exercises then, um, I think just maybe starting with right over left and just lifting up. Stretch your legs out, right over left, lifting up. Do that 8, 10, 12 times, then switch left over right, lifting up. Stretch out, left over right, lifting up. And then alternating, depending on what you want to start with, left or right, or right or left, just alternate, right over left, stretch out, left over right. Same thing when you come from downward dog, just so you work on the stepping part, left to right, step back, right to left, left to right, right to left. And then start jumping, crossing left over right, and right over left. But this I would not do during the practice. That's something that I would maybe spend five, ten minutes in the afternoon if I feel like I need to do some extra work. But seriously, just breathing, working correct technique, in the practice and trusting that it's going to happen, I think will actually do the trick. I've done none extra drills whatsoever, not a single one. So, but working with Sharachi and with Laruga, they're very specific in what they want you to do. That has helped me a lot. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.